So many things I wish I could go back in time and tell myself 25 years ago when I first started playing. So I just jotted down a list before starting this recording, and these are the things that popped into my head where I, man, I was just thinking, if I could go back in time and say, hey, Ronnie, check this out. These are, these are the first things that came to mind. They're probably pretty relevant. Maybe it'll help some of you. Speed is developed slowly and incrementally. So when you're learning something, don't try to practice it at the fastest pace you plan on playing it. Practice it at maybe half that speed. Go for accuracy and timing and tone. And accuracy means the technique and the phrasing. And then just build it slowly. Record yourself so you can see where you're at from one day to the next and from one week to the next. Less error is a powerful concept to, to have to digest over the years that it's really counterintuitive. It's, it's pulling from the right direction, the diaphragmatic use of pulling air in that manner rather than trying to breathe harder to make the instrument cooperate. Less air can translate to being able to play faster, um, have more fluidity in your playing, and get, getting a better tone out of the instrument. Setting goals. Even if they're simple goals, even if they're not detailed, even if you just write down a couple things on a piece of paper, write them down. Set goals. Write them down and know what they are day to day, week to week, month to month. They can be short, midterm, and long term goals. Um, even if you just want to write a short term goal and start with that, write something down so you have something that you're striving to improve on. Again, you can record yourself and go back and measure that. Learn how to play a 12 bar by yourself. Now, I did end up learning how to do this, but I, th I feel like it took longer than it could have or should have. This is a very powerful um, thing to be able to emote just a 12 bar blues all by yourself. No backing track, no other musicians, just you and the harmonica. There's so many lessons you're learning by being able to do that. You're learning about the structure of 12 bars, so you know exactly where the one and the four and the five chord come in and for how long. You're working on timing. You're working on phrasing, possibly. And what could be more important than being able to, if you're a blues harmonica player, than knowing that structure and being able to just play it by yourself? Just, I wish I had done that sooner. Journal often. I did journal a lot and write down, I was pretty good about this, but I would say, I would tell my former self, that you can do it even more. You can be more specific with your journaling and divide your journal into things like scales, riffs, and I and musical ideas, um, song studies, and get detailed with your journaling about perhaps certain parts of a song study that you're really into and why, Me meaning you're actually writing down thoughts beyond just the, the tablature that maybe you're tracking or trying to figure out. You're, 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 keeping track of what you're thinking about and why that that particular passage was so interesting to you and what made you want to digest it in the first place. So I would subdivide my journaling into more detailed categories. I've been saying this all along, but record yourself at least every week. I didn't do that in the beginning. And once I did start to record my live performances, I, I quickly realized um, many things that I needed to adjust that didn't sound good to my ear and I had to figure out why. Good example of that was catching myself using too much air and accidentally bending the four draw, pulling in on this note so hard that I'm accidentally putting, flatting the note beyond uh, what the instrument can tolerate for just the natural note. Natural note versus a flatted note that's unintentional. Um, I would tell myself that no one's really judging you other than yourself probably in your mind as you play. So put it all out there. Be more vulnerable. You know, my biggest challenge when I was learning was uh, I was so scared to put it out in front of other people. Um, I was taking a class with Michael Rubin who was teaching at um, I think he was teaching at the University of Texas, the summer school music program. It was, they offered, they opened up the, uh, the classrooms to music programs in the summertime when school was out. And 
this must have been like a it felt like a class of 30 it was probably a class of like 15 or 20 of us but i remember the first day he asked us each to go around and play something and i was i think the only one in the group that that said i can't play anything for you uh i was just too scared to put it out there i was it, I, it was terrifying for me to put it out there the minute i started to put it out there and be vulnerable it got easier really quickly and i improved dramatically from there on out so stop being your worst your worst critic. That's what I tell myself, and and instead become your biggest cheerleader. You know, uh, celebrate those moments that are working really well, and dream big. I would tell myself dream bigger than I than I thought. I I don't I think I remember at points stopping and thinking this is it, and this might have been around year five seven five to seven, eight years in, I felt like I hit a real wall in my playing where I thought this really is it. Like I'm not going anywhere from here. This is this is where I've arrived and I should just be happy with it. I didn't realize that if I kept pushing forward that just that just the process of pushing forward would get me to another level, which is exactly what happened. I tell myself to study other instruments beyond just the harmonica. Take more time to listen to horn players and piano players and guitarists and, and understand their phrasing and their tones that they use and try to incorporate some of that into your own playing. Uh, acquire more melodies. I was learning melodies in a couple different positions, but not enough. The more you work on learning melodies, the more you're learning about the instrument itself because... The, it's those note relationships. So the melody work that you have acquired tr also translates to higher level improvisation. Uh, I tell myself, learn every single blues groove you can find and forget the rest. And what I mean by that is I was learning some of these grooves and bass lines naturally, but I would have been I would have said, hey, be strict or s start really learning them note for note. Pick up what the bass player and the guitar lines are doing and learn how to play all that. Because once you can do that, you really can forget the rest. And what I mean is that improvisation sort of spontaneously and naturally spawns from those grooves and bass lines. So the more you understand those, the easier it is to just improvise and create the melodic lines. I would have told myself to hold the harmonica in the left hand from the beginning. I started playing as a right-handed player, and Dan Trainer, a harmonica player in Denver, said to me, you should really switch and put it in your left hand, and I took his advice, and it changed everything. So I would tell myself to play, start with that in your left hand. And one of the hardest lessons I ever had to learn and this goes for probably so many people out there and you just don't realize how true this is so I'm going to say it and look right at the camera when I say this gear does not equal tone let me say that again gear does not equate the sound that you are looking for you cannot buy your tone you can't and and it's hard because in the moment you don't even realize that's what you're doing you're chasing the solution to something that lies in technique and skill. And that has to do often with uh, the relationship of the harmonica to your embouchure, your mouth, your lips, the relationship to your cheek and face and what the hands are doing and microphone technique. All of this translates to that sound that you're chasing. Gear does not e equate tone. It just doesn't. That doesn't mean I don't like good gear. I promise you that if I had two amplifiers and one was just a horrible harmonica uh, amp, not a good harmonica amp, a horrible amp for harmonica and one was a great one, you'd be able to hear the difference, but it's not what's giving, it's not the characteristic of the sound that you think it is. In other words, it's really what's really getting it is you and your technique. Spend more time on, on your own ability. In other words, Grade yourself, grade yourself acoustically without without um, any gear. Work on it from that perspective first. That's what I would tell myself if I could go back in time, twenty five years ago. But I might also say to myself, 
it's funny because as long as this list is, I actually recognize that there are so many things that I did along the way that were just so right. Like playing, I played music. I started making music with musicians immediately from the very beginning of learning harmonica. I was playing and trying to improvise, not really knowing what to do, but just experimenting. Um, I was playing often, like every single day. That's good. Um, I was enthusiastic, seeking out music that inspired me. That was great. I was doing all sorts of things that were really good and I didn't realize it, but there's so many other little things that if I had just tweaked them, I think I would have developed, um, my playing would have developed much more quickly and possibly would have taken some other directions, I think, by now. So maybe that'll help some of you. <laughs> have a good day.